Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. This is Erica with Confessions of a Homeschooler and I have a new fun tutorial for you today. This is a super cute little knitting needles pouch and it is super easy, definitely beginner friendly. Here is what the inside looks like. There's a cute little clear acrylic pocket right here on this side where you can put goodies and then over here we've got this little flap and spots for all of your different sizes of knitting needles and then over here on the corner we have a little uh, patch where you can put your yarn needles for weaving in ends so this is a super easy project definitely beginner friendly so hopefully you'll enjoy this tutorial let's go ahead and get started so the supplies for this project are super simple you're going to need some fusible fleece some fabric for the outside and the inside of your bag some fabric for your pocket, some fabric for the top flap, some binding fabric uh, for the pocket, some binding fabric for the whole thing, a little piece of regular cotton batting. You'll also need some of this clear vinyl, and I'll show you the kind that I got. If you are nervous about using vinyl, I was the very first time I did it. It is super easy to sew with. Basically, you just treat it like a regular piece of fabric. The only thing that you need to make sure you don't do is iron over it because it is vinyl and it will just melt all over your iron. So do not iron this, otherwise you can treat it just like a regular piece of fabric. Super easy. And then we're also going to need some ribbon. If you do not have any ribbon, you are welcome to make your own using fabric. If you look back at my knitting supply pouch video, I do show you how to do it in that one. So that might be an option for you if you don't already have some ribbon. And then of course you'll need your standard supplies like rotary trimmer, self-healing mat, and a ruler. All of the supplies and exact cutting measurements will be in the PDF instructions below. So just click the show more link down here on the bottom of the video uh, to download the PDF so that you have the exact cutting instructions. Let's go ahead and get started. Started. All right, we're going to start by preparing the outside of our little case here. So I've got my outside fabric, my lining fabric, and my fusible fleece. I'm going to set the lining fabric aside, and I'm going to do follow the instructions on your fusible fleece to attach it to the outside fabric. Now, one side is nice and smooth. The other side is kind of lumpy. You probably can't see it on here, but you will be able to feel it. So we're going to put that on to our outside lining, and all you do is just laid across there and then normally follow the instructions on the fusible fleece that you get but normally you're just going to press your iron down for about 10 or so seconds and just keep moving it down until it's completely adhered to the fabric. So I'm going to do that and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, I have now fused my fleece on to my fabric and as you can see when you try and pick it up by the fabric, it's stuck on there. It doesn't go anywhere. One thing I want to mention, if you don't have fusible fleece, it's totally fine. You can just use regular quilt batting. You'll just want to run some quilt lines across it to um, just secure it down. So totally up to you. If you don't have this, that's fine. I happen to have some, so I'm going to use it for this project. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to adhere our piece of ribbon to the outside of our bag. So we're just going to fold our ribbon in half here. Find the center. And then we're going to measure across here and find the center of that. And this is 15 and a half inches wide, so the center should be somewhere around 7 and 3 quarters inches. So I'm just going to line up my ruler and then I'm just going to kind of make a mark. Now halfway this way it's 8 inches, so the center is going to be at 4 inches, which for me is right here, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm just going to put a tiny little dot right there so I know where the center is. And then I'm going to take my ribbon and just line it up basically in the middle. And then I'm just going to do probably um, a box with an X in it just to make it kind of cute. You could also just run a straight up and down line in here just to secure the ribbon. I am also going to grab a pin and just pin it really quick just so it doesn't move when I get over to my sewing table. Just gonna go back and forth. I'm gonna turn it, do the same. Turn it. Then we're going to do a little X here, just for fun. 
this is kind of overkill on a project like this, but it's kind of cute. And actually, if you use um, colorful thread that you can see, it'd be even cuter. Okay. Alrighty, so here it is. We're just gonna go ahead and set that piece aside. Um, and we're also going to take our lining and set that aside. Those pieces are done for now. And now we're gonna prepare our top flap, the one that folds down and protects our needles from falling out. So the first thing that we're going to do is take this little guy and put it on here. And then I'm just gonna take it over to my sewing machine and run a uh, stitch down here. I have a straight stitch on my sewing machine and that's totally fine. If you have a zigzag stitch, that might actually even be, um, be better and look really cute. I'm just gonna use my straight stitch. All right, so that's all done. And as you can see, it's now just attached, super easy. And then the next thing we're gonna do is round our corners. And so it doesn't matter, just flip over one of your pieces and we're gonna draw a rounded corner. Now there's a template in the PDF, but quite honestly, you can really just use anything that you have. I'm going to use this bucket and just trace around the corner here. It doesn't have to be any specific measurement. You could even, quite honestly, eyeball it if you wanted to. Uh, just make sure that it's about the same on both sides. So I'm just gonna place my little bucket right there and just draw. By the way, if you don't want rounded corners, this is just decorative. You could totally skip this step. Well, now I'm gonna do the same thing in the other corner. All right, the next thing that we're gonna do is we're just going to take our outside fabric and our lining fabric with our little piece on here. We're just gonna flip it on top of each other right sides together and just line up the edges. And then I'm just gonna throw a few pins in here just so that it doesn't move around on me. But we're gonna basically take this over to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew a quarter of an inch in, quarter of an inch inside this line all the way down this edge following this curve and back up to here. And I just do a back stitch at the front and back. You do not need to stitch this long edge. It will get stitched when we assemble our project. Now when you get to this curve, just slow down a little bit. Usually you can kind of guide it around the curve with your fingers. If it gets to a point where you feel like it's out of your control, you can lift up your foot and just turn your piece just a little bit. It's a nice, easy curve. so. This is super easy, not difficult. Just take your time. Okay. And again, we're at this curve, so we're just gonna go slow. Okay, so here we are, and now we're just going to, you can use a rotary trimmer or you can use scissors. I'm just going to trim right along this line and even a little bit to the inside of it so it's not super bulky. If when you're turning this you find that you have, it's kind of hard to turn, you can just do a couple snips in here, but normally this, this is a pretty gentle curve, you don't really need to do that. Just don't uh, snip into your stitch line is all. And then I'll just trim up this side. There we go. Okay, now we can just flip this inside or right side out. Sorry. We have our little flap here. And then I like to use one of these. You can also use your fingers just to kind of press out those seams, just kind of roll them out. This is nice if you have a pointed corner or a rounded edge, just kind of helps coax that seam out a little bit nicer. There we go. And now I'm just gonna take this over to the ironing board and just give it a press. And then we're going to run a stitch all the way around the outside of it just to kind of give it a finished look. It's not really uh, you know, performing much of a function, but I think it makes it look a little bit nicer. Again, just go slow around these corners. All 
All right, so here we are. It should be looking like this. And we've got that nice little detailed edge there to kind of make it look a little more professional. We're gonna set this piece aside now over by our bag outer and we're going to prepare our pockets. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is work on our front pocket where our little needles are gonna go. And so we're going to take just both of the pieces and we're gonna put them right sides together. And then we're just gonna sew down this short edge on the right hand side over here, just because that's gonna be kind of an exposed ed edge and we want it to be finished off. Okay, so here we are. I've just run a quick stitch down that a quarter of an inch in, and then I'm actually going to take this over to my sewing machine, or over to my ironing board, sorry, and I'm just going to press this. You can also kind of finger press it. I just like to uh, kind of press as I go, but we're gonna press that so we have a nice clean edge over here. Alrighty, so I've just pressed that so we have a nice seam over here so that we don't have any raw edges on our bag. I keep saying bag because I make so many bags. This is a needle case. Okay, then we're gonna take our uh, binding strip that I had you cut and all I've done is folded it in and pressed it a quarter of an inch in and then pressed it in half wrong sides together. We're gonna take these raw edges now and we're gonna line it up with the raw edges of our front pocket and we're gonna take it to the sewing machine and just sew quarter of an inch in all the way down. Now we can take this to the ironing board if we want and iron it up, press it up, but really all you need to do now is flip it over to the other side and flip it over the edge and then we're just gonna run a stitch down to secure it on the back side. Okay, so here we go. We've got our nice binding on our pocket and our finished edge. This one for right now we can set aside and now we're going to do the clear. And I'm actually gonna do this one slightly differently um, because I find that it's just a little bit easier to bind it this way. So we don't need to worry about folding in the edges at all. They will get caught up in our binding when we put our project together. But what I did do was iron my piece of binding in half and then I pressed in both sides towards the middle, okay? So press it in half so you have a middle line and then press in each edge towards the center and then fold that in half and then just kind of re-give it a press. So I'm gonna go ahead and now take this over to the machine. I have folded, uh, like I said, in half and I've placed this clear right into that crease. Hopefully you can see that in here. So you can see the edge of the clear and it's just sliding right in there. And I'm gonna take that over to my machine and I'm just going to run a stitch down there to attach that. Now the only thing to be careful of with this is just it's a little bit slipperier, slipperier than normal and so you just wanna kinda of go slow so that your plastic doesn't slip out. Um, and just make sure that you're getting both sides. I didn't really mention that but hopefully it goes without saying. Okay, so here we go. We can go ahead and set this pocket aside for just a second. And now we are going to grab our front pocket and our lining piece. And we're going to line up this front pocket on the left, bottom left corner of our lining piece, making sure that our finished edge is pointing towards the right here. Then what we're gonna do is take this to the machine and just sew straight lines every about inch or so uh, you can make them wider or skinnier. You can kind of customize this to your needs. I'm gonna put a few pins in here just so that it doesn't move around on me. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and draw lines about one and a half uh, inches or so. So you can see that. And then I'll just use that line as a guide. Like I said, you can kind of customize this if you want to put scissors in here. You can make one of these a little bit bigger. Totally up to you. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this over to the machine now. 
You don't have to worry about sewing along these edges at all. They will get caught up when we put our project together. So just do a straight stitch down each of the lines that you've decided uh, where you want your pockets. Do one down this far edge just to seal it on. And then when I'm up at the top here, I do do a back stitch up here just to give these pockets a little bit more durability. Alright guys, here we are. Now, I can't remember if I mentioned or not, but this is just a friction erasable pen. Um, I will put a link for them below, but you can write all over your quilts and then you just take them over to the iron and as you can see, my lines have disappeared. They disappear with heat. Now, I will say with projects, if they get super cold, the lines can reappear. Um, you can solve that by throwing this in the wash, so whatever. I would uh, probably not do that though since we have plastic on this one, but you can use whatever marking tool you want. You can also use this little guy, and he makes seams, uh, creases in your fabric as well, which leaves really no mark, um, and that's another great way to line your projects. Okay. So we are going to go ahead and set this piece aside. We only have one more thing to prepare and then we can assemble everything. So we're going to prepare our binding and you should have three binding strips. And all we're going to do is take these over to the sewing machine, put them end to end, right sides together and just quarter of an inch run a stitch down there. So you're gonna do that one and then this other edge so that you virtually make one big long piece. And then we're gonna take that over to the ironing board and we're gonna fold it in half wrong sides together and just press it so that we've got a nice crease. Okay, now when I'm doing binding this way, uh, where I'm just using a straight seam, this is such a small project, I don't usually bother with the diagonals, but I will press my seams open like that just to kind of reduce on bulk a little bit and then fold it in half, like I said, wrong sides together and just crease down your entire piece. All right, guys, we're almost done. Your binding should now be looking like this. One big long strip of binding and pressed in half wrong sides together. We're gonna set this aside for just a second and we're going to uh, get all our pieces in place. So I'm going to go ahead and take the outside of my bag with my straps and I'm going to place it right side down. Then I'm going to take my lining and place that right side up. So we've got kind of a sandwich here. We've got the outside, the fusible fleece, the lining with our pocket right side up. And just make sure that everything's all nice and lined up. Now, the one thing that you do wanna kind of be careful of are these ribbons. Just kind of get them out of the way for now. Uh, and you're gonna have to kind of fiddle around them as you are attaching your bag together as well. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our top flap and we are going to line it up along the top edge and then we're going to take our clear pocket and line that up along this edge. Now here's a time where these wonder clips come in handy. I'm just going to put a few of these all the way around my piece just to keep everything together and so it doesn't just shift around. Uh, another nice thing about these wonder clips is they don't put holes in your project so when you're working with this uh, vinyl that makes it kind of nice as well. Okay, so once you have everything kind of attached down, we're going to add our binding. And then we're gonna be done, guys. So now we have our raw edge of our binding. So the edge that opens up is gonna be aligned with the raw edge of our project here. The closed or nicer edge will be towards our project. And I'm just gonna kind of start down here in this corner so that I have plenty of room up here for my seam when I come back around. Just make sure that you have all your layers together. And I'm just going to do a back stitch right here. And so straight down to this corner. When you get to a quarter of an inch from the edge of your project here, with your needle in the down position, raise your foot, turn it uh, just like to a slight angle, put your foot back down and do a back stitch just to kind of secure that and cut your thread. Okay, now we're going to lift it up. Uh, just make sure that you're ribbons are out of the way this whole project process guys okay so now we've got it this way we're going to take our binding and I just put my finger right here and then fold my binding going straight back so that it's 
this raw edge is now lining up with this raw edge. Okay, so let's show that again. It's coming this way. I'm just gonna put my finger here and pull it so that you're gonna have a diagonal seam right here, or a diagonal fold, I should say, and the raw edges on this side are gonna be lined up. I'm gonna put my finger there again and then just fold it straight down. So basically we now have this corner and I'll show you how to do that again up a little bit more close when we get to the next corner. But now we're going to just keep on sewing down this edge till we get to the next corner. Okay, we're coming to our next corner. Again, stop one quarter of an inch, lift up your presser foot, turn just to a slight angle, back stitch. Cut your thread, okay, and you can pull your project out. Okay, so here we are, we did our little back stitch there, we've turned our project, and now we have this tail. I'm gonna put my finger right here, and pull the fabric, and just kinda give it a little diagonal press there so that the raw edge of your binding is now lining up with the raw edge of this fabric, okay? Again, hold it with this finger, and just fold it straight down on top of itself, kinda lining up this edge now, and this edge, okay? So you should have this little, fun little triangle fold right there, okay? And then we're gonna just keep sewing, and we're gonna do that on all four corners. And no, I don't back stitch right there when I start back up. I've never had a quilt come apart on me, and this is always how I do them. Okay, now you probably can't see it here, but I'm coming up to where I started and I'm gonna give myself about, I don't know, five or six inches. The a little bit more space that you give yourself, the easier it'll be. So I'm gonna just stop now and do a back stitch here to secure it. Cut my thread. And now we're going to join these seams because as you can see that we have a lot of extra here. And so I'm just going to try and find somewhere in the middle here, like right about here. And I'm just gonna take this down onto my cutting mat here. This doesn't really matter where you do this, uh, just cut off a straight line. Okay, so that, that's about in the middle, eh, a little bit farther over, it's okay. And now we're gonna take this piece and lay it across the top of that piece, and you want them overlapping by one quarter of an inch, and you wanna make sure they're nice and straight, you don't want any ripples or anything. And honestly, I'm just eyeballing this. I'm gonna mark it with my fingernail at about a quarter of an inch, so I marked it right there. And then I'm gonna take this down here and just trim off that piece. Now, since I cut a little bit closer to this side, be careful with that too, by the way. Um, I'm going, I may pull back a few of these stitches just so I have a little bit more room. But essentially now what we're gonna do, because that wasn't very in the middle, but you know, you're, you're doing the best you can. So now essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to take these pieces together so they're flat and then open them up and we're just going to Sew them together. There we go. Like so. We're just gonna take these over to the sewing machine and just sew a quarter of an inch down that strip so that when we're done, they will fold out nice and flat, okay? So again, take your two ends here, keep them straight, fold them together, and then open them up and sew a quarter of an inch to, to secure them together. All right, and then when you open it up, you'll see that your fabric lays flat now. And so all I'm gonna do here is just finger press this open, and then fold it back down on itself. And then as you can see, now we stopped here, now we can just continue on until we meet back up with our beginning stitch line. Again, I'm gonna do a little back stitch there.
And then I went past my starting stitch, just uh, you know, like a half inch or so, and did a back stitch. And now we're good there. And then just really quickly, when you're sewing on your first round of binding, just make sure that when you're adding it to this edge right here, that the uh, little flap that keeps your needles in is not caught up in that binding or your little flap won't close. So just make sure it's scooted up over far enough, a quarter of an inch, so that when you add your binding, it won't get caught in that seam. And then same thing when you come back around the other edge. Now we're going to do the same thing we did when we binded this pocket. We're gonna press the fabric around, just fold out these corners. I'll show you how to handle those when we get to them. And then we're going to go ahead and pull our binding out, fold it over, and then run a stitch to attach it. So when you get to your first corner, you're just going to fold up the bottom piece first and then fold over the side edge sorry this is finicky and I know my fingers are kind of in the way but there's really no other way to do this so fold up the bottom edge and then fold over the side okay lift up your presser foot with the needle down turn and keep going you're gonna have a little mired corner there in the edge. Okay, we're at our next corner, same thing. Just, and you kinda have to just, just make sure it's pulled nice and snug around that corner. So fold up the bottom edge, press that with your finger right there, and then fold in the side edge. And you can also use like a little, if you have one of those little purple thing tools, that can kind of help you. But you're basically looking for this kind of diagonal seam right there. And right when you get into that corner, needle down, press, pull up your presser foot, turn your project, straighten out your binding, and then just keep on going. Okay, we're back to where we started. I'm just gonna go over that just a little bit, do a back stitch. We're done. All right guys, we are all done with our project. You should now be able to fold these edges in. You've got your nice little flap with your needle carrier and places for all of your needles and then you can store um, scissors, uh, needle gauges, all kinds of fun stuff. All right guys, so here we have our finished project. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As you can see, it was super easy. I think you can put one of these together in about an hour. I love this little flap here. It keeps all my knitting needles nice and secure and I'm always searching for yarn needles, so I'm really loving this little uh, needle minder that we just hid right up here in the top corner. Anyways, that's it for today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe so I know to keep making tutorials like this for you guys. Thanks so much for joining me today and I will see you next time.